As aid has slowed to a trickle, Ukrainians have been forced to improvise to keep the frontline troops supplied. DW's Nick Connolly takes a look at how they're coping in this exclusive report from a Ukrainian military facility. This heap of scrap was once an M77 artillery gun. It's just a tiny part of the weapons graveyard at this Ukrainian military facility. It's where Western military tech comes from the front lines to prove to Western donors that it's been used as intended, but more importantly, to be salvaged. Our American counterparts just can't get their heads around it. When they see what we do, they don't have the words. They wouldn't even think about sending this kind of stuff to scrap, let alone repairing it. We used to get guns sent to us that you could still recognize as artillery pieces. That's not always the case anymore, but it's not like we have a choice. With Western arms deliveries reduced to a trickle, these Ukrainian army engineers have had to improvise. They call it cannibalism here, making one functional artillery gun from what's left of many damaged ones. The engineers here tell us they noticed a drop-off in deliveries halfway through 2023, even before the current funding delay. Back then, initial Western stockpiles were exhausted after a year of war, but new production had still not caught up. Workers here are essentially putting together puzzles of different parts every single day. Some new, some salvaged, and some improvised. They come in with shrapnel injuries, but we managed to get them healthy again. You could think you were speaking to a doctor. But the fighting at the front lines is so intense that this man's patients are often back in the repair shop within weeks. I've had situations where the same gun comes back to me with fresh damage two, three or even four times. This one's almost finished and it's ready to go back to the front lines. But there's only so much that cannibalizing damaged equipment can do. That's where unexpected solutions come in. This was stripped from a commercial digger. It's not an improved solution in the gun's manual, but it works. Ukrainian firms are now also producing many of the simpler spares. We don't need American-built screws and rubber seals. We can do all that ourselves. What we need are the big parts we can't make ourselves. If we don't get them, I guess we'll find a way. We'll put something together out of the scraps we have. But it's going to cost us time. Time that Ukrainian troops on the front lines don't have. Russia is already taking advantage of Ukraine's declining firepower to push forward. If US aid is held up any longer, many here in Ukraine worry that the slow retreat of recent months could soon turn into a rout. U.S. lawmakers have approved a bill providing almost $61 billion worth of aid and military support to Ukraine. The package had been delayed for months due to cross-party wrangling. Democrats joined forces with some moderate Republican lawmakers to push the bill through, though the majority of Republicans voted against it. Lawmakers cheered and waved Ukrainian flags. The House will be... As the House of Representatives gave the green light for more aid to Ukraine. The nearly $61 billion aid package includes funds for more weapons for Kyiv, more training for Ukrainian soldiers, as well as more cash to help the U.S. replenish its own weapons stockpiles. It provides for greater accountability over Ukraine aid. It forces an in-game strategy for the Ukraine war. It includes a loan instrument of this foreign aid to Ukraine and the Repo Act to ensure that Russian assets pay for part of the bill. It's support that Ukrainian soldiers have been waiting for since last year. Fuck. Troops fighting on the front line have been forced to ration ammunition. Allowing Russian forces to launch more deadly missile attacks on Ukrainian cities, forcing residents into air raid shelters and destroying civilian infrastructure like power generation plants. Kyiv has been pleading for more air defense systems for months. Ukraine's president expressed his gratitude to the U.S. lawmakers involved in moving the stalled aid forward. 
Дякую кожному і кожній, хто I thank everyone who supported our package. This is a life-saving decision. I'm grateful personally to Speaker Mike Johnson. To all American hearts who, like us in the Ukraine, feel that Russian evil definitely should not prevail. I hope that the package will be considered in the U.S. Senate and submitted to President Biden's desk quickly enough. The final vote to release the support for Ukraine should happen this coming week. For more on this, let's speak to DW's William Glukraft. Hello, William. Big relief from the Ukrainian president. What's the money expected to be used for? Well, most of it is for the U.S., actually. It's for weapons manufacturers and the weapons industry in the United States. This is something that critics uh, of this spending kind of were fast and loose with saying, you know, trying to frame it as some kind of gift to Ukraine or free money or money leaving the United States. But remember, most of these weapons are American weapons. They have to be built, produced and bought somewhere. And that's in the United States. So most of these billions going right back into the U.S. economy, uh, into the U.S. weapons uh, sector. Uh, and to the U.S. military. Some of this money is for, quote, operations in the region for the U.S. military. And something I found also very interesting uh, in this bill is it raises uh, to an unspecified amount uh, the president's own ability to use his so-called drawdown authority. Now, remember, Congress officially has the constitutional right to control spending of U.S. taxpayer money. But over a long period of time, the executive branch, the president, has gotten considerable wiggle room in how much money he has to play with in his own coffers. Uh, that's one way that Ukraine has been getting funded all this time, even without congressional support, through this drawdown uh, uh, funds within the Defense Department, for example, or the State Department, for example. Uh, and that this bill raises the president's ability to do that. So in the future, if these problems come up where Congress is dragging its feet in approving mm -hmm. more money, the president might have more wiggle room uh, to spend some of his own uh, walking around money, shall we say. Walking around money. Interesting way to put it. What's also interesting is that this package for Ukraine has been on the table for months. Why has it taken so long for Congress to agree on a bill? I mean, to put it simply, petty politics and a presidential election year. Um, this has been caught up in domestic politics and being held hostage by people on the far right of the Republican Party who are anti-interventionist, in some cases pro-Russian, uh, and do not want to see uh, support for Ukraine for a number of reasons, either, either because of fiscal priorities, they think it's just too much money, they don't want to spend it, national debt reasons, uh, borrowing reasons, uh, or like I said, they don't really support Ukraine, they might be a bit more uh, friendlier to Russia. And Donald Trump, of course, has been wishy-washy, to say the least, on support for Ukraine, and he's running for president and wants to keep this as a campaign issue, and has tied the funding to Ukraine, among other foreign policy priorities for the United States, like Israel, like Taiwan, uh, to the border issue, to immigration, which is another major uh, campaign issue. Uh, and that's why it got tanked at first. Republicans didn't want to cross Donald Trump, who they're very, very loyal to. But even that, when they had a migration deal uh, on the table in Congress earlier in the winter, even that failed, because uh, mm. Donald Trump basically said, no, 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 keep this front and center. Um, that's basically why it's taken so long. And Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, seemed to have a change of heart uh, going from just being a regular congressional uh, person in Congress to the leader of mm. the House, realizing the foreign policy priority uh, for the United States and pushing this through finally. Right, right. What's also key to note is that at least 100 Republicans voted against the bill, quite significant. How worried should Ukraine be about America's commitment to its fight? Right. So this latest round of funding, which is the first new funding since 2022, and the first funding under a Republican-controlled Congress, uh, took at least six months to get through. An entire winter, Ukraine has gone through a fighting without additional weapons or aid and uncertainty from the United States' its biggest backer. Um, with Republicans, 112 of them, a majority of them, voting against this still, even after all of this, uh, bodes uh, poorly for what be coming forward for Ukraine. Uh, should Republicans hold on to Congress? Should Donald Trump win in November? 
Um, so while there's a great amount of relief from Zelensky, as we heard, that this huge tranche of funding has finally gone through and there will be fresh weapons and fresh support for Ukraine, Ukraine is by no means out of the woods, is by no means safe with mm. American support, depending how political developments uh, continue uh, this year and into next year in the United States. Right. DW's William Glowcroft, thank you very much for the insights. Mike Martin is the War Studies Senior Fellow at King's College London. Hello, Mike. We heard uh, from my colleague William there. Uh, what could Ukraine get with $61 billion worth of aid? It's a, it's a huge amount of money. And it's actually worth saying that $61 billion is more money than the total amount of American aid from January 2022 to January 2024. So it, it's an uplift of a scale that we haven't yet seen in this part of the war. And a lot of that is going to be spent on things like artillery ammunition, which is, is hugely lacking at the moment, and air defences as well. We've seen these terrible air raids over Ukrainian cities. Mm. So that sounds like definitely good news. How much of a difference, though, could this aid make for Ukraine's fight against Russia? As things stand, there's not much development from their side, is there? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, the phrase game changer is used so much in the Ukraine war. And actually, most of the time, things aren't a game changer. But actually, this is a bit of a turning point. There's three things, really, that you need to fight a war. You need the will to fight, and Ukraine's got that. You need the manpower. And recently, they just changed their mobilization laws to increase their ability to, to conscript people and, and build a bigger army. And now you see the third thing that you need, which is resources. And those resources are going to start to flow pretty quickly. Some of them are pre-positioned already. Um, and as you heard, some of it is for U.S. military operations in the region. And so it should start to make a difference in the coming days and weeks, obviously, once it's got Senate and presidential approval. Mm. I mean, as you see, Ukrainian soldiers have run so low on munitions that it begs the question, really, because you seem to suggest that this aid could actually be the aid to make the difference. So is it really enough to at least balance things out for Ukraine and even maybe take the lead against Russia in this war? I think take the lead is, is perhaps going a bit far. And of course, we really need to look forward to what happens in the US presidential election. But I think, I think we need to make no bones about this. This is a seismic shift in the funding and the resourcing of a war. And when a war, you know, we, if you look at wars that drag on for, say, two, three, four, five years, look at the world wars, for instance, in the end, they all become about economic might. How much can you supply your troops with things like ammunition and fuel and all that kind of stuff? And what this bill does is it really sets the scene for Ukraine to have the tools that it needs uh, to finish the job. The Ukrainian army is warning a Russian offensive is looming. What more does it need from its allies to push back Russia's advance on its territory? So uh, we've already spoken about uh, artillery ammunition. And if you look at the amount of artillery fired by the two sides, the Russians are sort of out shooting the Ukrainians 10 to 1 in some areas. So that's hugely important because the Ukrainians almost immediately, they can stop rationing because they know that there's more supplies coming and they can start to do counter battery fire. So that's very important. We also have, and your listeners, your viewers might remember um, about eight months ago, it was agreed that F-16s were going to be given to Ukraine. And these as well, we've seen over the over recent weeks and months that Russian air dominance has increased because Ukraine hasn't been able to fly as many sorties through lack of money. So with those F-16s and, and with this, these extra supplies, we'll start to see more of an even match in the air. So all of these things combined will start to make a difference. And Ukraine certainly will be able to uh, you know, there's been a bit of backsliding in the Ukrainian positions recently because of lack of supplies. Certainly, they'll be able to halt uh, the Russian uh, advances. And mm. I, I wouldn't worry so much now about this about this Russian offensive that's been mooted.
Okay, it's been a long period of frustration uh, from uh, President Zelensky because he's been, you know, seeking aid for quite a while. We saw how long it took for the U.S. to pass this bill. How could such delays in the future affect its defense against Russia? Yeah, and again, we, we come back to this key thing that's happening in, a mem in November, which is the U.S. presidential election. Um, this this package here, plus also European support, right? This this failure to pass American support until very recently has focused European minds. So they've also been increasing their support. But increased European support plus this American support will get them beyond the U.S. election. Um, and I, I think provided you know Biden wins that rather than Donald Trump, I think the Ukrainians are going to have a, a a smoother supply pipeline. And that, you know, we've spoken about weapons and the effect that has on the battlefield. This is a hugely symbolic thing as well, because it, it, it reaffirms Western support for Ukraine. And that strikes a psychological blow against Russia and against President Putin. And psychology is all important in war. Right. Mike Martin, military expert in London, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you.